Okay? As we gather tonight, we turn to you, O oh God, to thank you for the many, many blessings you have given to all of us, classmates of UST Medicine, Class 74, as well as your blessings to our families. We thank you for the opportunities that you have given us to be your instruments, particularly as your instruments of healing, for you are the great healer. We thank you for giving us so many classmates with numerous talents that they used and continue to do so to make the world a little better. We thank you also for these friends who don't want to bury their talents or keep these talents to themselves, but share their talents and skills unselfishly for others to benefit as well. So today, tonight, this morning for our, the Philippines, we abandon ourselves to your divine providence as we struggle to see the driving force behind this class project that we are planning. Let us be guided by your promptings to let the virtues of faith and charity play important role in getting it started. Let us not be swayed by the riches for we may not be able to use it for ourselves but to be able to help others, our extended families, especially the needy, the marginalized, and for other useful advocacies and charities. Help us to exercise the true spirit of poverty by being voluntarily detached from all the material wealth of this earth, for we are only stewards. We are stewards of these temporary riches. If this will be of help, if, it, if this will help us give more to our neighbors in need, then your will be done. If you will it, Lord, it will happen. Show us the path, O oh God, to keep our intentions upright always. Keep our hearts united to you, our true source of hope and happiness, our true treasure. We ask you this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well said. Um, just a little uh, housekeeping. Somebody is uh, talking, let's mute ourselves. Um, Tony will be in charge of the chat. So he will be monitoring the chat section. So if there is an important question that's relevant to what is being said, if he or he may or may not interrupt depending on the importance of the question. Otherwise, the question will be yes uh, afterwards, after this speech. Because Montu has to leave we will ask him to give his uh, things about uh, investing. Okay, so we will put Moncho as uh, the yeah, yeah, no, cutting cutting line. Na naman. Uh, I don't know if you got my message. Uh, thanks, Tito. Merry Christmas, for everybody, by the way. I hope, hope you had a great Christmas. Um, so, uh, just to break the ice, I, I listed like a let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six different investment uh, stocks, if you will. So Apple, Microsoft, uh, Bitcoin, uh, Standard Poor 500, the ETF, SPY, CYDY on the recommendation of Joe Pitt, and then the mutual funds of the index 500. And so based on those six investments, if you invested it, on December 18, as of December 24, all of them made money actually. But the one that made the most money was Bitcoin. So investing $22,000, it made $2,287. Uh, 
The second that made the most was the, uh, uh, let's see, number two was CYDY of uh, Joseph, made $867. The third was Apple, which, which made 712 And then uh, Microsoft made 427 And then uh, the uh, ETF, Spider, $58. The mutual fund uh, index 500 made 53. So the bottom line, uh, the conclusion to that is that the, the riskier the investment, the higher your potential, but also uh, your potential of, of really losing a lot of money is also high. So it's like gambling, right? So just take your pick, take your poison. Right now, the stock market is at its height. So it's a little dangerous time to be putting all your cards on the table. Anyway, let me start. Uh, Investing in the market is, is actually a great way of building wealth. It is by no means the only way. You don't have to be super smart to invest in the market. You just need to know some basic fundamentals of which some of our colleagues have already alluded to. Most Americans' nest eggs are actually in their homes. Obviously, to be able to buy a home, you need to have good credit. So that's the basic fundamental if you were 20 years old and I had a chance or somebody had a chance to advise you, the best thing you could do is try to uh, keep your credit uh, great, uh, build a credit. And that's establishing a good credit is the fundamental to building wealth. As it's probably the only way you can use OPM or other people's money. That's one way of building wealth by using other people's money. You can seldom go wrong in real estate which is one way of borrowing money, using other people's money, as long as you choose a good location and as they say, location, location, and location. However, if you live in California, any location in California next to the water is probably a good location. So the uh, California dreamers, you're lucky. Your nest egg in your house, if you did buy a house, is, is worth a lot of money now. You've got good equity in there. So if you did sell your house and decided to move to Texas, you could probably buy the same size house, all amenities the same, and have a lot of money left over. Uh, same thing if you move to South Dakota, right? <laughs> um, the other way to multiply or to, uh, to make money is by multiplying yourself. So you're making money as a doctor. You could clone yourself and, and have multiple uh, 1974 classmates in a way. And the way to do that is by employing or, or forming a big group uh, with the same specialty and employ uh, young people uh, with the goal of being a partner in the end. So you're basically uh, multiplying yourself and thus you can uh, make wealth doing this. Uh, and the other thing is owning your own business. And that's a good way to build wealth as there are a lot of write-offs when you have your own business, whatever it is, you know, uh, there's there's a lot of advantages to owning your own business. Uh, anyway, back to the market, uh, there are certain fundamentals you need to learn to guide in your stock picking and decision making, whether to go long term or buy and sell in a short period of time. My experience is as follows, and I'm sure a number of our more experienced investors have similar experiences. In the beginning, I used a broker who was recommended by other colleagues. However, I observed that he was too conservative and turned my portfolio by buying and selling. And most of it is under the recommendation of his company. Uh, I used Prudential back in those days. So I gave up on him because what happened was we, when we went through a cycle of ups and downs, when the market was down, I lost quite a bit of money. But when the market was really booming, there was a bull market. I didn't make as much as you know as I thought I would make. So, uh, so I, I basically decided I was going to try it on my own. There's there's also a certain amount of luck uh, put into this. So, uh, in the beginning, I used to super di my portfolio was super diversified, which is what most of the experts advise. Um, however, if you're too diversified, the reward isn't much on the upside, although uh, there's, the risk is, is mitigated because you're not going to lose a lot of money. Certain sectors will, will crash, but other sectors will uh, 
uh, be uh, still be okay if you diversified well. I I, I got wind of uh, reading uh, Warren Buffett's book when he preached that <laughs> quote unquote diversification can be dangerous. Of course, you have to take it in context. Uh, he also said that it is that diversification is a protection against ignorance. So basing it on this, I decided that I was just gonna pick, uh, limit my portfolio to like 10 stocks and pick good ones among them, Apple and Facebook and load up on it. So again, there was some amount of luck in that and uh, uh, that, that reaped me good benefits by doing that. Uh, but also time is, is in your, if you have a lot of time, then uh, you know, as, as per Joseph, you will never, well, never say never, you probably will sell them lose money if you have time. Because even if the market goes down and your portfolio goes down, if you don't sell your stock and you haven't lost yet. So if you wait a little bit, most of those stocks, if they're good companies, will go back up. So if you have time, which we don't, then uh, that would be to your advantage. So we're looking at a five year window. So we really need to pick the good ones that we think would uh, be of value in, in five years. As a reminder, uh, this is out of the topic, but as a reminder, the items that are protected from creditors, for instance, if you get sued, which doctors are always vulnerable to, uh, at least in Texas, your house, which is your homestead is protected, one car used in the business, your life insurance cash value is also protected. In Texas, you're allowed one acre of land in the urban area, which is protected from creditors and 100 acres in the rural area. And of course, being in Texas, you're allowed to have two horses or two mules, a donkey, a saddle, blanket, and a pillow for, for each uh, animal that you have. So. Um, bottom line, uh, your best investment actually is your health, physical and mental. So you need to be healthy. Otherwise, all your efforts are not going to be of benefit. So that, that's it. That's my experience. Any questions? Um. May I say something? Actually, not everyone, well, including myself, are not really very well versed on uh, investing or even terminologies in stock in about in investing. So, if you have any kind, don't be shy. I mean, I before this Zoom, I start, I started re rereading again about investing because there are so many terms that you have to learn on uh, investing. So. If, you, if something is not clear to you, there are so many, it's very confusing, unless you have been uh, doing a lot of investing in your life, so you'll be able to understand it better. Okay. So any questions for Monchu at this yeah, point? Question, are... Monchu. Uh, can, I have, can I ask a question? Yes, of course. Yeah, Monchu, uh, Merry Christmas. By the way, <laughs> uh, I'm not clear, we're talking about group uh, investment. And then yes. if, and whatever we, we profit or whatever the outcome is, it will be divided to all the members. Why would a group investment be better than individual? I'm just, I'm not clear about it. Uh, is it the amount of money uh, that you? <laughs> That's a good I, question, won't you? I, I think the group investment, I mean, obviously you're gonna be looking at a larger amount of money, but uh, there's very, there's probably the, the biggest advantage is that you, uh, with the group investment, then you assign somebody who's seasoned, uh, seasoned investors, <laughs> such as Joseph is, okay. that will help manage the investment. But as far as uh, group investment or individual investment, if you, if you invest in the same things, you'll, you'll end up having the same amount of money. Uh, but I think the advantage of having a group especially if you are not familiar with investing in the market. Uh, the advantage is having somebody who's, uh, who knows what he's doing, uh, help uh, guide the uh, uh, investment portfolio and hopefully make money for the group. So oh, I think that's okay. the biggest advantage to it. So it's more uh, 
uh, more heads better than one, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, that's that's correct. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Monty. I, 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 can you see this screen that I uh, just put uh, in the group? How to invest in the stock market? Does everybody see this? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So you, you see number number two. Look at number two. Avoid individual stocks if you are a beginner. That answers your question to uh, Dante, I think. Okay. <laughs> That's why it's safer to be with a group. Oh, no, it's safer to be with a group because we openly discuss the stocks we're going to invest. I'm referring to putting all our 25 grand uh, into 40 people and, and the group investing it. So, I mean, I know the advantage of the group, except I'm referring more to the big amount of money compared to your 25,000 being invested on your own per advice by the group. I'm just, that's the only reason I'm asking. Yeah. Um, I think yeah, Eric you, asked the same question before, so. Uh, um, won't you, I, I have a question regarding, yeah. um, actually, uh, Tito's uh, list there, the first one, choose the right stocks. Uh, do you have a particular uh, source of um, information on which is the be the best stock? To I mean, there's so many advisories. Yes. And choosing how we, how do you choose your ten top ten? Right. Uh, I have. Well, first of all, I guess uh, just like in medical school, we, we have to read on the market, do a little bit of reading on your own, and learn. And then, of course, it's difficult even with that amount of reading. You know. So I, I invested in a few uh, uh, periodicals. What, this is one of them, personal finance. Um, I, I, and, and I look at that, I, I look at the recommendations they have and they usually have a list of stocks that they've already invested in or recommended and they have a track record. So I look at that and then I also research each individual stock I mean, obviously you get biased with certain stocks like, you know, I use an Apple phone and I've seen the ups and downs of Apple ever since it started with Steve Jobs losing his job actually because Apple went down the drain and then taking it back over and now it's, it's doing very well. So I was quite impressed with that. So I felt that that was a good stock to invest in. Uh, I know Warren Buffett is so high on, on Apple but he's also so high on Coca-Cola. If you look at Coca-Cola, it's been around for ages, you know. So those are the things that I look for. Is this stock going to withstand the time? I mean, how useful is it? You know, so a lot of these things that you ask yourself wh what to invest in, they're all practical questions. Mm -hmm. And and then you make up your mind, you know. Uh, there are stocks like GE that you never think would, would, uh, would fail, but apparently it has, you know. I mean, can you imagine General Electric, they have such a wide variety of, of, uh, of uh, uh, companies that, that are all included in GE, including, you know, the engines for, for planes, but, you know, they're, they're not doing too well. So, uh, yeah, invest in periodicals, you know, uh, and, uh, but you still have to make your own judgment in the end. One of the things that uh, Joe has mentioned is why do we have to invest in stocks? I, I know, I'm, I'm sure some a few of us don't really, you know, invest in stocks. So this is why if you, if you are just doing a checking account, that's the red line, the red color here at the bottom, you only have an average annual interest return of 0.5%. If you're in the savings account, it's only 0.9%. Now with the investment accounts, the average annual index average is about seven seven percent. So that's the reason why Jope started all this. So I don't think I can see your screen there, Chito. We don't see anything. Don't see anything? Yeah, it's a blank page, Chito. Oh. Are you didn't share? You are screen sharing. Okay, let me repeat. Anyway, you can talk about some other things until I find that page again. Yeah, I think Eric has a talk here, so maybe we can proceed with Eric. Okay. Hello. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. Can, can I start now? Yes. Is that okay, Chito? Yeah. I want to okay, listen to my, you. <laughs> my name Thank is you, Eric. Thank you, Thanks, Monchu. Thank you very much. 
My name is Eric, and I'm supposed to, uh, to talk about introduction uh, to uh, investing for beginners. And, and I chose this uh, subject because uh, some are beginners, some are experts. And so I want to uh, dwell with the basic facts and concepts which are important for investing in the stock market. Uh, there are several things which uh, are important. If you are just a beginner, uh, you have to uh, understand the concept of asset allocation and diversification. Uh, when you talk about asset allocation, it's a technique of trying to divide the assets by percentage to decrease the chance of risk and to increase the chance of a success. So when you talk about assets, we talk about cash, bonds, and stocks. That's the most common assets cash, bonds, and stocks. And if you are going to invest in the stock market, you should have a good cash flow or a strong cash position. Diversification simply means that you are trying to mix your assets in your portfolio. So instead of having just one stock, you probably should have two or three of different stocks. So your risk of failing is much less. The, the second thing which is important is the, the so-called asset allocation by age. Since we are 70 years old and some of us are retired, we can afford to lose a lot of money. There's a simple formula for this, which is 100 minus your age equals the percentage that should be in the stock market. So if you are 50 years old, about half of your asset can be in the stocks. If you're 70, then about it's, it's about 30 to 35, depends upon your aggressiveness. So obviously if you're young, if you're 40, then you can have 40%, 60% uh, of your asset in stocks. But at our age, you gotta be careful of how much you put in the stock market. The third thing is very important is the stock market cycle. This is actually very controversial and can be a misnomer. Since the stock market cycle is not really a cycle, okay, if you follow the S&P 500, the NASDAQ and all that, and if you run it several years, it's not a perfect cycle. Rather, it's a gyration of, 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 of the market itself. You can have a gyration of 1%, 2% every day. Sometimes you can have a correction of 10% and even a bear market of 30% or even 40%. So you have to be concerned about that. And, and in order to study that, you're going deep into uh, the study of the stock market, which is called technical analysis. So it, it's hard to master the stock market cycle. The next item that is important is your time frame. What is your time frame? What is your time horizon? If it's only one year, forget it. At least for the stock market, you should have five to 10 years. Obviously at 80, who cares about the stock market? Maybe our interest is already gone at that point. Uh, the next important aspect is to distinguish between investing and speculation. And this is a very important thing, how to distinguish that. You really have to go deep into the uh, rigmarole of stock market investing and study the fundamental and technical analysis of stocks. And that means reading and studying the stock market. Uh, investing simply means that you are buying something that will increase in value or will make money. That's investing. Whereas speculation means that you're trying to make a gain based on momentum. Okay. So when, when Joseph was discussing Apple, that's investing. Then the next day he shift to NKLA stocks. That is speculation. So you have to understand that. So there's a difference between the two stocks. Uh, it's apples and oranges here. So it's uh, no pun intended here, but, uh, and you have to learn that. Uh, one of the question earlier was, why do you still have to, to buy individual stocks versus mutual funds or ETF? Uh, in short, mutual fund is a bunch of stocks put in together. So if you own a mutual fund which invests in S&P 500, it has 500 stocks. If you invest in ETF, which has NASDAQ 100, it has 100 of the NASDAQ stocks. 
Okay, so why do you want to invest in individual stocks? In my reasoning, it's because of growth. Okay, if you want to buy a really fast growth stocks, that's one reason why you want to go to individual stocks. The other reason you want to invest in a individual stock is if you are for income, if you're into dividends, okay? There are some retired people that they invest in big companies and these companies pay dividends, which are income. And in my mind, those are the only two reasons at my age why I will invest in, in, in individual stocks. Apple, for instance, or Tesla, or NVIDIA for growth and for income. If you want to buy, for instance, uh, Verizon, it pays 4% dividend. If you're Canadian, if you're Canadian, you buy TD Toronto, uh, Toronto Dominion Bank, it pays about 5%. And you buy Enbridge. Enbridge is a gas company in Canada, it pays 70% dividend. So if you're into income, then that's one stock that you may want to buy. And finally, the, the most important aspect in investing is you have to be aware of the risk versus reward. Never forget that, that there's a reward, there's also a risk. The more the reward, the greater the risk, the risk involved. The less the reward, the less the risk. And never underplay your risk and never overplay your rewards. That's very important. And you have to balance that and, and, and understand that investing is a business. It is a business, it's not a play. And you have to rely on your tolerance, your temperament and your comfort level. So that's my uh, short talk about the stock market for beginners. And if you have any questions, I will answer the questions. There's a question from Glenda. Question from Glenda. Glenda, by the way, is my daughter. Uh, okay. Information of everyone. Thank you. This is Beta. Glenda. Yeah, just curious lang po. What vehicle are we gonna be using in buying and selling stocks? Di ba parang, yun lang. Robin Hood or ano ba yung mga ibang vehicle? Ba? Mary Trace. Brokerage firms, yeah. Oh. So, iba-iba bang vehicle na gagamitin when you invest? I, I, I really don't know uh, what, the, the, what the question is all about. Is it for individual stocks or is it, is it for a group? No, for the group. The I, I don't know that because I'm not a member of the group or <laughs> I, yeah. I, I really don't know how to answer the question. Of course, it probably should be a, a, a uh, like a brokerage, like a TD yes. Ameritrade or something like that. Or you know, I think that's what uh, Jobis was trying to think about. Uh, for my uh, own sake, Answer the uh, question I have also. Yeah, to answer the question also, this is the purpose why we made the Zoom conference to decide whether or not that we will do a group. Uh, oh. or not. Yeah, so we don't know yet. We, we, we don't have an organization yet. <laughs> All right. It's like a learning together. experience. Uh, uh, we're just, we're just deciding for the group and individual. Yeah. Or individual yeah. I'm just here for educational purposes also. Uh, okay. okay. Sorry. Okay. Any can questions? I, uh, yeah, can I uh, talk a little bit about that? Uh, on my first, I don't know if you can hear me. Who's this? Problem with. Uh, Reyes. Can you, can you say your name, please? So Boy, I can. Reyes. Good answer, Reyes. My, hi, hi, pro. my Bitcoin. Pro. Video. Bitcoin guy. I don't know why I cannot correct it. So. No, we can hear you, boy. Go ahead. Oi. Yeah. Welcome, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been here all the time. So I cannot. I don't know what's wrong with this uh, laptop. Oh, we can hear you. Anyway, uh, I have here. Uh, I have few accounts in a few brokerages. What I recommend are the ones that buy and sell stocks that uh, you you don't get charged and. Uh, uh, you can also do some research. So I suggest, uh, uh, you know, we go with what Jeffes is, uh, is uh, recommending, the Ameritrade. There are some stocks you can buy in Ameritrade and there are some stocks that you cannot buy there. 
So I suggest we own both Robinhood and Ameritrade. Uh, most of the uh, uh, NASDAQ and New York Stock Exchange uh, uh, trading are free in either one. Uh, the disadvantage of Ameritrade is that you cannot buy uh, cryptocurrency. Okay, uh, as what Monchu said, uh, we have to decide or you have to decide what you should invest in. Cryptocurrency, you, you can make a lot of money and you can lose a lot of money. Okay, so uh, it's very volatile. And uh, so if you're going to trade on your own, then I suggest own both Ameritrade and, uh, and Robinhood, okay? Uh, with Robinhood, you know somebody who has an account in Robinhood, he can uh, email you the link. And uh, if you go through that, the one who, re who referred to you uh, will be given one stock. It's by lottery and you will also get uh, one stock. Uh, the companies that, you know, uh, you get and he gets, okay? Nobody knows what that stock is. Okay. And uh, as before, what I suggested in, the, uh, in our uh, chat, please do not touch retirement money. We are in that stage that if something happens, we won't be able to recoup whatever you, we will lose. So have a play money, uh, unless the, uh, you know, uh, that's all I can, I can say. Uh, is uh, Ophel here? Yeah, Ophel, I, I saw yeah. Ophel. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Okay. I joined late because I overslept. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> anyway, is it my turn? No, not yet. Yes. Huh? Yeah, it's your turn. Uh, it's my turn. Okay. Uh, I made sure to write down my sharing so I don't miss out on anything. Uh, anyway, compared to where you're coming from, uh, PSEI or Philippine Stock Exchange is really a very minuscule market compared to your NYSE and NASDAQ. But nevertheless, uh, we have the same underlying concepts. Uh, we have a very small market, like you're talking of only 30 index listed companies, the big cap. But overall, there are about 270 companies listed, majority of which are in the small cap and the medium cap companies. Anyway, I'm um, Investing can really be overwhelming, especially if you're talking of stock trading. Trading stocks can be exciting and fun because it can reward us with high yield returns, dividends, as well as trading gains. Like when you do swing trading, buy low, sell high, repeatedly then you appreciate all those trading gains. It must be emphasized though that there are no guarantees when it comes to individual stocks. Many companies do not pay out dividends and are not obliged to do so even if they have traditionally done so. And any stock may go bankrupt. The flip side of this is you can make a lot of money if you invest in the right company. The challenge therefore is to come up with a powerful investing system that combines fundamental and technical analysis to help find leading stocks with potential for big gains. Fundamental analysis is the first step that you need to do, purpose of which is to identify which right stocks to buy. And I generally look at seven traits when I do fundamental analysis. Namely, number one, what is the company's current quarterly earnings? What is their annual earnings growth? Do they have a new product? new service, new management, or a new price high? What is the supply and demand for the company's shares? 
what is the company all about? Is it a leader or a laggard? Is there institutional sponsorship, meaning is there ownership of the stock by mutual funds, banks, pension funds, and other large institutions? They have teams of analysts researching hundreds of stocks, so it's good confirmation to see them buying a stock you are considering. And lastly is the market direction, which is really the most important. If you buy a stock when the market is in a strong uptrend, you have a 75% chance of being right. If you buy when the market is in a downtrend, you have a 75% chance of being wrong. Other minor things I consider, does the company pay dividends? What is the PE ratio? At 15, it is undervalued. At 20 and above, it is overvalued and therefore expensive. <laughs> Nevertheless, this is not an absolute deterrent as I also occasionally buy stocks even if the PE is at 30 and above, especially if the company has really very strong fundamentals and has a positive growth history. So once I have identified which stocks to buy, I now proceed to technical analysis. By the way, um, Beta, is your daughter Glenda uh, Philippine-based or is she USA-based? She is USA-based. Ah, USA-based. Oh, yeah. uh, because here in the Philippines, uh, yeah, we have several online trading platforms uh, where you can have yourself registered. Like personally, I'm registered with First Metrosec, so FNSEC is my online trading platform, and I personally manage my stocks. Technical analysis is about timing the stock market. At what point exactly do you get in or do you get out? So that's technical analysis. <laughs> I have a trading strategy, which is a set of rules to help me make trading decisions. Like what is my rule of entry? What is my rule of exit? At what profit? do I lock in, at what point do I lock in my profit, and how much of a loss can I take? Entering the markets randomly will mean <clears throat> we will not know how to exit the trade. And looking at the chart, I'm always on the lookout for reversal patterns. Be alert when the trend starts to change. Yes, I use stock charts, particularly the chart Nexus, to validate the market direction. <clears throat> is the stock trading up or down? Trending, I mean. Is it forming buy points and sell signals? Are fund managers enthusiastically buying or are they selling their shares fast? As an individual investor, my basic goal is to buy stocks. Institutional investors are buying and have buying heavily and avoid the stocks they are aggressively selling. I look at the price and volume changes for clues whether the institutional investors are stepping in to support their positions by buying more shares or are they just dumping their shares to get out as quickly as they can. When you have big price drops on heavy volume at the same time, these are signs of institutional selling. When there is light volume on up days, then this shows weak buying and therefore it's not enough to put the stock price back up. Compared to New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ, the PSEI is a mere drop in the bucket. Our daily average trading volume is anywhere between five to seven billion pesos. It's easy to conclude that there's foreign buying when you see the volume move up to, for example, 10 to 15 billion pesos. When we see this movement up, we then check, there's a way of checking uh, what these institutional investors are buying. Is it Ayala Corp, PLDT, Megawide, et cetera? Then sinasabayan namin sila. So we get a free ride as they move the stock prices up. But at the very outset, we make decisions at what level will I be happy? Will I be happy with a five or a 10% gain? 
because once we achieve that kind of uh, uh, gain, then we have to immediately get out before the big guys start dumping their shares. So that's how you also try to beat the big boys. Because any institutional buying will push the stock price up and the institutional selling will push the stock price down. So you have to be somewhere in the middle. <clears throat> in a trending market, I make use of moving averages, both the short-term and the long-term moving averages as a technical indicator. Moving averages help validate whether the trend will be sustained or are there signs of reversal. I'm particularly on the lookout for golden cross or death cross when you look at the moving averages. A rule of entry, I buy only during an uptrend that must be supported by above average volume. When the market is ranging, or what we say consolidating, that is, it is neither an uptrend nor a downtrend, but the stock prices are just merely going up and down, going up and down. So that's what you call as a ranging or consolidating market. It is really a moment of indecision when investors uh, are not really uh, decided yet whether to get in or get out. So they just stand there, <laughs> they just watch. So this is a ranging market when it's in that phase, I make use of the stochastics and the RSI or relative strength index level. Using both the stochastics and the RSI, it will help me identify the overbought and the oversold positions. You buy at oversold level and you sell at overbought position. It's also during this consolidation of the market that I try to do swing trading. When I see a comfortable trading range like five to 7% between resistance and support level, then I also try to get in. Buy low at support level, sell high at resistance level. And this can be repeatedly done like every week or every two weeks until the market breaks out of the consolidation market. <clears throat> so when the market is in correction, then we have to distinguish between is this a healthy correction or is it a warning signal that a reversal towards the bearish pattern is going to happen soon? When the market is in correction and I see that it is still some kind of a healthy correction or pullback, well, anyway, I sell my weaker stocks while keeping a close watch on my stronger stocks prepared to lock in gains if they start weakening with the market. Sometimes I sell a portion only to lock in some profits and at the same time maintain a position in case the stock continues to move up higher. So when do I sell my stocks? On the fence, I find value in selling while the stock is still advancing. Sell into strength. On defense, I try to limit my losses to seven to eight percent. I avoid taking a big loss as big losses can take years to recover. In a particularly weak or volatile market, it will be wiser to limit loss at three to five percent. By the way, none of our brokers here in the Philippines have a facility in place for an automatic stop loss, sad to say. And we, this is the very tool that Joseph um, has been relying upon, which gives him so much confidence and which has helped him really uh, achieve all those substantial gains. Although, again, even with the stop loss option, you can still be blindsided by unpredictable events, like a violent crash of the market, internet glitches, etc. So here in the Philippines, it's doubly challenging as we need to keep an eagle eye on the stocks we have owned. So we have to really keep an eagle eye on the chart. I guess this is the reason why eventually uh, I decided to just hold on to a few stocks 
in the buy and hold mode. I'm no longer actively doing trading as really it eats up a lot of my time. So when do I take profits? Though contrary to human nature, the best way to sell a stock is while it is on its way up, it's still advancing and looking strong to everyone. So you don't get caught in hard trending 20 to even higher percent of correction that can even hit market leaders. To conclude, make sure you don't get into the market before you are ready. Be conservative and never invest in anything you do not understand. Before you jump in without the right knowledge, think about this old stock market saying, bulls make money, birds make money, but pigs just get slaughtered. So let us not be the pigs that can be slaughtered <laughs> in this stock market uh, trading. So what has been the outcome for me? My observation and experience, even with a very tedious uh, analysis of both the fundamental and the technical aspects, you can still lose. You win some, you lose some. So there are so many things that can be factored in as this, why these things are happening. I remember that stock prices move up and down, generally, not generally, but contributory largely to this are the sentiments of people. People sell their stocks when they are happy and want to lock in their profit, when they are scared, when they are angry, it could be for any reason they sell off. And you can be a casualty of that kind of sentiment. Then of course, you look at all the headwinds, global headwinds, regional headwinds, local headwinds. And if you really do not have the time trying to monitor what's happening, as in my case, I try to update myself by watching every morning Market Edge. This is a program of Channel 2 ANC, and they have a very good discussion uh, coming from both international and local resource speakers. So that somehow gives me a feel of what's happening globally because what's happening globally also affects us here locally. It's the general market sentiment, whatever, like for example, when there's a rout in the USA stock market, we could also be negatively affected. So this, yeah, so re really it can come to a point that even if I tell myself, don't fall in love with your stocks, don't let go of your emotions, get out if you must need to get out. But even with that kind of reminder, I too can be very stubborn. So I have had my share of losses, my share of wins. I'm not really big into this. It's just small amount of money that I have exposed myself to. I guess it's just my way of trying to find out if this is a thing that I can also master <laughs> and excel in. So there is a system if you need to, you have to follow, but you have to have the time to devote to it. Otherwise, if you do not have the time, don't get into it. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Paul Phil? Do we have other speakers? Uh, Job is supposed to be doing the welcome address, and then we, we should have we should be starting also whether or not we really have to form a group invest uh, an investment group. Okay. Uh, so we have to listen to all before we question, right? Yeah. Maybe something. Uh -huh. that... oh. Yeah. Um, okay. Boy Reyes mentioned, Boy Reyes mentioned uh, Marie Dale that she has something yeah. about uh, crypto. Okay, let me look for Ophel, you. Can you please repeat your indications for selling the stock? What is your criteria? I'm sorry, I'm having sore throat. Your uh, okay. criteria for selling a stock. Yeah, criteria for selling. Uh, first of all, I look at 
I, am I in a position where I have already gained profit? Is this a profit I'm happy with? Uh, do I see a sustained uptrend? Or do I see signs of reversal? Like when the market, is, as I have said earlier, I sell, I sell into strength, meaning by the market is still advancing, I sell into strength. So the moving average is a very useful technical indicator for this as it will show you uh, when the market is going to reverse down into the bearish market, uh, you see signs of the moving average getting closer. It is a line, the moving average, it is a line uh, that really summarizes all the average uh, closing prices of a particular stock. So when you see the moving average line getting closer and closer to the stock price line, then that means that the uptrend will not be sustained for long. And when you see this cross, uh, crossing down across the stock price down below it, then it's a sign of reversal and you should really be on your guard. So it could be a telltale sign for me to, to get out. So there are other parameters that can be factored in together with this, but I rely heavily on moving averages because when you see a, uh, when the moving average when the space between the moving average line and the price stock price, ma pa. There is a wide, but there is a wide space between the moving average line and you see the moving average line moving up north. Then that means that uptrend can be sustained for a long time. But when that space narrows down and the moving average line gets closer and closer to the stock price, then it's a signal, a warning signal that any time the market can reverse or that particular stock can reverse. So it's just one of those. And there's also that <clears throat> uh, kind of concept that I have somehow adhered to that when even with big, big leaders, re remember I said earlier, I try to go for what institutional investors are into, whether there's net buying, then I try to join, but they're also buying, et cetera. Um, anyway, even with institutional leaders like this <clears throat> and with big uh, shares, with big companies that are really being, that are in, de <clears throat> in demand, excuse me. It's <clears throat> not a clock. An uptrend. <clears throat> uh, we try to limit also our gain uh, to 25%, 25%. Usually, historically, if you look at the growth of these big companies, the first run, they will really easily get to the 25%, after which it starts to go down. So what the advice I've been reading about is that you try, when you we reach the 25% in the first run, then you get out. Then you wait for that stock to form another base. Another base means it declines, it bottoms out, then it goes up again. So you try to get into the, that kind of base development. So you also get your chance to buy again that company, et cetera, et cetera. It's a, it's a complicated story, but more or less, that's how I try to guide myself in, when I sell a, a stock I own. Can I ask well, a question? Yeah. Hello. Can yes. I add something? Can yes. I add something to what you said? Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. we can hear you. Okay, what I learned, because I'm a, I used to be a disciple of Warren Buffett. I'm an investor at the Berkshire Hathaway <coughs> for years. So I used to own A and B. Anyway, what I learned from him and I never forgot is when you try to buy a stock, you look for the management company and the leadership. So I always look who the CEO, I investigate the CEO, the previous accomplishments, where he came from, all his connections and what he did in the past. And of course the people he is uh, appointing. And from that, I look for three things in the management, and the CEO. I look for <clears throat> intelligence. I look for 
energy, and I look for integrity. I have never forgotten these three things from uh, Charlie Munger and uh, Warren Buffett. He said, if you have no integrity, intelligence and energy is useless. It will kill you. You want them to be dumb and lazy if they have no integrity. And so I just wanna share that, those three characteristics. And what I do also when I sell or I'm gonna give an example and Joseph will hate me for this, but I have to tell you what I just did. Uh, I invested in Nikola. I seldom sell my stocks. I'm very long-term. I'm as long-term as, you know, Masayoshi-san, who is the uh, CEO of SoftBank. He said he invests for 300 years. And I agree for long-term, I don't know about 300 years, but so I really, really sell, seldom sell a stock. And technical analysis, I look at it for fun, but it's really, I'm really after the business fundamentals and the, Philipp, and the people running the show, their mission, their vision. And of course, I always look at the accounting. I always look at the financial returns and all those, um, numbers. But um, Nicola, going back, I gave it all the chances for Nicola to, uh, well, I bought it, I think Nicola went to 90, then it went to 60, and emotionally I bought it. I even made a mistake, I even made a mistake of buying in my Roth and buying another oh. share in my other account, as account. Anyway, I gave it all the chance uh, to recover. So from 60, it started going down and then I learned all the fraudulent things that they did. There were Heidenberg research, et cetera, et cetera, in the internet. And I said, well, I don't believe these people. I'm gonna keep on, on holding the stock. I even bought more stocks when it went to, uh, I think 40, a share. Then they have this um, arrangement with Mary Barra, who is the CEO of General Motors. And I said, wow, that's, that's a headwind. It's, it's gonna be good for the stock. So I kept holding and holding and holding. But then it came to a point, well, I listened to the CEO, um, Travis Milton disappeared all of a sudden. And I said, that's really bad. So I remembered all these three things from Warren Buffett about the integrity, the energy, and the intelligence. And we all know that hydrogen will be where EB probably is going, though Elon Musk is against it. You know, just stop me if I'm going out of topic. So anyway, because hydrogen is such a new technology, so I said, well, Nikola is trying to do the battery and the hydrogen, and you know they are on the right track. But I just can't take the people. You know, he disappeared. The CEO, who is Travis Milton, and another guy, I think Michael took over. He was interviewed on CNBC, etc. Kramer, and I was not happy with the way he answered it. I just felt that this company is gonna go nowhere because of the leadership. And that's why I'm emphasizing the uh, management team, the CEO, their vision, they need to be transparent. I've never, I did not see that. So I gave it another chance. And I think the last draw is um, uh, up, oh, Mary Barra, discontinued, it was not a contract yet. They were trying to, uh, to work with Nicola, but they abandoned the whole thing. So I said, I am gonna just sell this. So I sold it for a loss. And after I sold, I just felt very happy. And I know it's now $16. 
I said, will I buy it because they're going to do hydrogen? But again, I just want to share this because I have never forgotten what Warren, what Buffett and Munger said about the integrity, the intelligence, and the energy. And that's why I, I brought it up. In fact, right now, uh, one reason I, you know, I, I want to uh, listen today I was never on the list, is uh, I wanna know, cause I, I know this is a very good medium for us to help each other because we can learn from each other, especially we have OFL in the Philippines. I'm also interested in the Philippines. I have a dilemma right now, actually, you must know, you must be very well aware of what's happening with Alibaba. It's a, for me, it's a very good company and I had the chance to meet, um, Ma here in the States, very short, and I like the guy. Now, I sold, uh, I mean, before the election, because of Donald Trump, we didn't know. After he lost, I said, well, it's gonna be Biden and probably they will have better relation with China. And I kept Baba, Alibaba, but you know, last Friday, it fell down. It's like 36 points or, is it 20% down? It's a very good company. And the reason I ask you, Ophel, when, you do, when do you sell a stock? It is a political, the problem is political, but this company is very good. I, I studied it, I track it. It seems like everything is good with it. And I'm, I do not know whether I'm gonna sell it tomorrow or whether I'm gonna buy more tomorrow. It's really, really down. And it's one of those stocks that uh, with the PE, I, I think the PE is 22 around that, which is very good for a growth stock, which is probably, uh, I think it's even better than Amazon. So anyway, I just want to share that. And uh, that's why I asked the question, when do you sell the stock? So when do you sell the stock? When do you sell it? For me, I only sell it when the fundamentals are bad, when they change I, I, the business model, when there I, is a I, change, and I do not like the management. I only, I only keep going. Can, can I ask I a question? Put, sure. I only sell a stock if I'm winning, and if there's a life life change that I need the money, and I'm winning. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, if you're not winning, well, go usually sell the stock. I do not buy the stock. I usually do not buy it if you know I'm if I cannot afford to lose it. So that, that is that is why I that. said I, that's why I said in the in the beginning you have, a, you have to know the distinction between investing and speculation. If you check on Nikola stock, it's very hard to make a fundamental and technical analysis. There's a scarcity of data. Well, if you check with, on if, if you check on a on, on a S and P or a Nasdaq stock, then you can make a fundamental analysis. But if you check at Nikola, all it says is there are a lot of blanks. So it's yeah. very hard to make a decision besides the recommendation and analyst recommendation. That's all. Yeah, I think for a young stock like that, very very uh, because you know nitrogen is obviously a new technology. It's not proven. You don't know where it's going to go. That's again one reason the high high risk high return. So if it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. Uh, if you listen to Warren Buffett, he says he only buys stocks that he can keep forever. So in answer to your question, when do you sell it? Probably not if you, if you no. think it's a stock. But if it's a uh, stock that potentially uh, has uh, currently no, um, I mean, it's very speculative, then maybe you need to sell it at the first sign of a little bit of profit. Uh, and then buy it again when it goes down. I don't know. I mean, uh, I I kind of <laughs> my 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 idol really is Buffett. You know, uh, yeah. Pick a few stocks, load up on it, and keep it forever. So right now he has a lot of Apple stock. I think it's thirty percent of the uh, Berkshire Hathaway portfolio, which is Warren Buffett. Yeah. And they ask him, why do you have so much stocks? in Apple and said, I consider it as part of my business. He's not going to sell it. He's going to probably reduce, you know, and buy some more, that kind of thing, but he's going to keep it forever, basically as part of his business. So, Well, what kept uh, Berkshire Hathaway, because I'm a shareholder, 
for five years, it did not really grow, but it's up there compared, you know, it's up there still with, uh, I think the market cap is like $450 billion. Yeah. But because, because of Apple, it drove Berkshire Hathaway stock up. So it, it's like stable in the middle. It did yeah. not really grow. So I did not sell my Berkshire Hathaway. I even bought more of the B, which is the cheaper stock. Yeah. So, can I ask you a question? I can I ask you a question? You. Sure. Can I ask you a question? Are you talking can I ask you a question, me? Dale? Yes. Uh, what would happen if, uh, if, uh, if Charlie Munger and, uh, and that guy uh, Buffett dies? Are you going to stick with your Berkshire Hathaway? Yo, he, well, has chosen, I have, he has chosen a board. There are he has five, chosen a board five years ago. Yeah, there are five Don't people who are going to take yeah. over. Okay. I, I keep forgetting their names, you know but much, I met... Uh, the, 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 the Berkshire Hathaway's A is 350000 per stock. <laughs> yeah, it went up. Yeah, I think for some but of our... Yeah. And, and I, and I love... 350000 and I do a point you know, of order, they, they, like in the Philippines, the trading is 10 billion and we're they're happy. We 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 uh the money spent in New York Stock Exchange per day, the money traded is two 270 27 or 270 trillion. Can I do a point of order, please? Yeah. Uh, I, I think a lot of our discussion now is, is probably way over the head of some of our classmates. I mean, I don't yeah. Sound, <laughs> yeah, we got got uh, too far. So, so let's too just far. go. Yeah, to the we have gone too far. The thing that the thing we need to discuss today, and I don't know where Joseph is, is whether we're going to proceed with his proposals or not. You know, uh, I think jo Joseph is confused with the time. Well, maybe. Be, mommy. <laughs> maybe it's, it's uh, uh, look, 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 mommy. Sleepy. I called up Joseph and I think uh, Asha, I gave I, I gave the Zoom link again. Uh, I don't know. Okay. okay. So anyway, uh, those that 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 are new to the market, please please ask questions. There are no stupid questions, by the way. And uh, you know, it, <laughs> that's the whole reason why we're here. We just making a comment, uh, Amonchu. Yeah, uh, we've, we've heard uh, Ophel uh, do a uh, kind of like an inside analysis of what is involved in picking and choosing and selling stuff. Yes, yes. It's, it's a 24 hour <laughs> job to track the market. That's how hard it is. It, it, it's a, a very intensive. Some of those, those guys have been doing this for years. And there's also some nuances if you don't want to keep the stock, you know, like Joseph is implying that you could do a stop loss, that's the kind of thing, you know, so when the market starts to drop, you mitigate your losses by selling at a certain point automatically, you know, you yeah. don't have to go in the market, I mean, you know. Yeah, it, it, it's a form of day trading, um, a shorter day trading, it's hour, it's not even a day trade, it's an hour trade. It's, it has uh, pros and cons. That's why I, I wish Lopez could, could be here to uh, present it. Yeah, because Joseph is a, sort of a semi-day trader. I know who, who day trades is Ray Fong, but he's not here with us. He's Philippine boy. He wakes up in the morning and trades the US market. He wakes up in the middle of the night. He stays up in the middle of the night, you know. Won't you, this is not me. Yes. Huh? Can you hear me? Yes. I just wanted to share with you uh, and then and Eric. Yes. Uh, and to all of you, what our experience is, my husband is a nurse uh, in ICU and he and I just retired. Now we got the VA and I, I, I finished 28 years and combining his military and finished 44 years. So during this time, uh, I was not able to attention, but uh, what, what the lab has done, we have uh, put our uh, some money in PSP, 
It's one. Uh, VA is a five percent at the end of the year. So, uh, I see them bad, so I want. I think the the um the S and P five hundred and that remained in the um, G fund, which is low risk or no yeah, risk. Uh, so are, you, are you following me? So, so far, right now, um, we, um, we, um, we, well, right now, what we did is put more money in the S&P pirate. Uh, before, you know, because of the virus, we can't go down, but now we can. We started thinking of putting our money more in the SP 500, and I'm not sure. Uh, right now, I think we are comfortable with what we have, and um, um, so. But this virus, that's we were debating whether what do we do? We I move to the G fund or just stay where we are. Is, is, did you guys uh, no, no, me? may I comment? Because I'm also yes, government. Sir. So most people don't know about the TSP, only the government people. Because the TSP oh. is for 401k for the US government. Yes. And so the G fund is more like uh, government uh, treasuries. Yes. Oh, okay. The okay. G fund only uh, is very safe. You never lose your money, but That's it right. gives you maybe two to three percent a year that's right so, so that's if you want to keep it there it, that's how much it will gain but uh there are many other choices like this c is your like your spy your s p 500 is your c yes uh but that's also very dangerous yeah. at that age uh we, we should not uh go more than 35 percent on the on the c but the oh. uh, so just for TSP, it's a very different um, uh, vehicle for uh, uh, for for uh, saving. And uh, what they recommend right now for government workers is to put your uh, put a part maybe uh, half of your uh, uh, TSP in your uh, income L income, which means your mm -hmm retired you put it on l income actually most of it is g is government treasuries so maybe 30 percent is is, uh, is tax and the rest is government so if you want to earn more than g you can put it on l income so uh, so that's that's my my suggestion to you okay uh, so the l income means what again this is the, uh... the l income is like 30 percent uh uh, SP, SP 500 and 60 to 70 percent uh, government treasuries. Okay, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, that's good. Thank you so much. That I was unclear, but now I, it's, it's better. Better. Thank you. Sure. I think Tony Gabarda has a question. Tony? <clears throat> Yeah, it's in the chat group. I mean, it's in the chat box. I just came from Coral Springs. I, I even forgot that there's a meeting tonight. It's good that we came home early. Do you have a question? Yeah, it's there in the chat box. Uh, you know, Job is talking about trading in and out of the market. But what's the fee? Where you're talking about millions of dollars in trade, the fee may be different. You know, so it might eat out our investments. Uh, but I, I think he's trading in TD Ameritrade, which is zero fees. In even a million of dollars, <coughs> yeah, he's talking I, about I don't know. Of dollars of trade, it cannot be free, and it's a million. If it's hundred bucks or thousand bucks, maybe. I thought I saw Jopes. Uh, you see this class seventy four. Yeah, of course. What Joe? <laughs> <laughs> They're looking for you. Yeah, I am sorry because I could not get in because I, I 
I got the wrong number and then uh, I did not know that I was going to put the password. It's, I was putting the, the number instead of the password. <laughs> so I was confused. Sorry about that. Do you have the answer, Jopez, about the question? About the okay, uh, have you started? We started, I guess. Huh? Okay. Um, this is what I, I was planning to do. Okay. We want to um, to organize a, a group, a USD Medicine Class 1974 investment group, just like a partnership. Uh, to do that, we need to get a, uh, an EIN, that is an employer identification number. And that is like a business tax ID number issued by the IRS. Under this, the US-based doctors and the Philippine-based doctors would be able to, to invest under this, uh, this uh, number. Uh, we will, and the only way, you know, there should be at least uh, under this uh, group, investment group, there will be a, around five board of directors. And um, I pl plan to divide this into West Coast and East Coast. And in Florida, I, I was planning to assign Mildred to get the funds, those, the Philippine base from Opel. Opel will be organizing the Philippine-based doctors to transmit money to Mildred. And then uh, we'll all put this all together in a TD Ameritrade if it works, you know. And our, my plan is uh, to invest in a, um, in a, uh, in a, uh, I, what do you call it, this, uh, in a uh, moment, momentum uh, investing strategy. We'll try the momentum side. There are several stocks that I know that gives 100%, 300%, 500%, even to 1,000% uh, return in one year. And these stocks, they go up, continuously go up and, um, and they, uh, and those are the stocks that go down, they continuously go down. And if we, uh, if we invest in, in these stocks, we can, you know, probably uh, start with a 25% in one stock uh, for a, for a uh, you know, experiment. And then, and then put a stop limit immediately after we, by the, after we bought the, the stock, stop limit to sell order. This way, once we, we place the order, a stop limit order, there's no way we can lose. You know, this, I could hear some noise there. Is that the question? I, I'm hearing a noise. Anyway, um, once we place the order, a stop limit order, Whatever we invest, 25% of the available funds is what we're going to start. And these funds will never will never lose whatever it may be because we put a stop immediately after we bought it. And that, you know, if it sells, fine. That means we bought the stock at a high price, and then it will just automatically sell off, sell off, and then we get our money back couple of days later, but we still have 75% funds available. So if the, if the stock goes down farther, we'll buy 50% of the, of the funds at a low price. And then from there, hopefully that is the lowest price. And then and hopefully the following day, it will start to go up. And then uh, and we, uh, immediately after we bought also that, that second stock that, you know, that went down that tip down. We also put a stop limit, uh, you know, order to sell in case. But we did, if it doesn't sell, it, it, the following day it continues to go up. Every time it goes up, we 
we follow the the current price and we we just go below below it probably 50 cents below it and um, and to save the our capital gains so every session that we we we, we do this you know we get capital gains and depending how many shares we bought that's how you know we protect our capital gains and then and um, and then we will start all over again so we have available because we have available you know other, uh 25% remaining and that will stay there until you know there are changes like uh the second stock that we bought is uh sell off you know automatically but it, it doesn't if it goes up it just keep moving up our stop limit and we keep the gains so every day every every almost every day we we get capital gains and no losses how can you lose when you have stop limit order immediately after you bought it if it sells you just break even the stock that we bought in the beginning that sell off, we cannot touch that until two days later because it, the, that uh, that uh, stock that we bought will uh, will have to settle the accounts in two days. So there's a moratorium of one day, and and the funds will be available again for trade the day after. I don't know if you understand me, you know. Um. So this is. Uh, what we call the momentum uh, uh, investing strategy. There's nothing okay. to lose. The worst that can happen is break even. It's very, it, most of the stuff that we, we invest usually is uh, a growth stock technology because they are the one that, you know, move very fast and the, the return is uh, over 100% you know, in a year. That is another one one pathway, you know, how to make money. And then the, the other one is uh, go for a a high flyer stock like uh, Apple, and just leave it there and let it grow. Apple makes only eighty two percent in a year, so we will not meet our target for everybody for each of us to reach a a million dollar richer. Those who are millionaires, they can they they can be a multimillionaire if uh, we follow this uh, approach. Now, question, Joseph. Yeah, there are only thirty four of us here who are presently attending this Zoom conference. How oh, thirty four. Okay, thirty four, and your goal is uh, about sixty. How can we come up with one point two million? Ah. Uh, that's why uh, if we have only 34, uh, then um, we don't need, uh, we have to forget about that uh, goal of 1.2 million. I don't think we'll meet that. So we have to change our strategy by, uh, um, by uh, you know, that's why I, I did not uh, put a limit that one has to invest 20,000. Any, anyone can invest. 1,000, 5,000, depending how much they can afford. But at any rate, no matter how, you know, how small the, you know, how much, uh, how, it will depend on the, how many, um, the, on the number of shares we invest, you know, and the, and, and, and the gains we make, you know, over, supposing uh, out of 34, each invest, uh, let us say just an average of 10,000 or 5,000. That will be how much will that be? 34, uh, 10, 10,000. That will be 340,000. 340,000. Yeah, 340,000. So, so we have to live with it, 340,000. And that is, that's a lot of money. And we can, you know, generate income by investing in a 
following a momentum investing strategy. What I'm relevant that I told you earlier. I think Ging has a, um, a question for Joe Pest. Did he answer your question, uh, Ging? About the stop stop loss? No, it's not the stop loss, it's stop limit. Because stop oh. loss is as uh, the stop limit. Uh, stop I, limit, yeah. She has a question, one second. Let me just read it. Yeah. Question on stop loss, she said. When do you yeah. put it? You posted in the Bible, but nobody answered it. I gave an example of Apple. It split at 136 and dropped to 110. King, you can unmute. Unmute so you can uh, expound on your question. So how did you how do you put your stop limit, Joseph? Jobes, you put you bought it 136. So you put 136.5 and then but it dropped to 110. So it will be sold, right? That's uh, what happens is that uh, in the stop limit, there are two prices that they require us to do. One is the activation price, and the other one is stop limit price. So the activation price usually more than the stop limit price. Usually that comes first before the stop price, stop limit price. Stop, supposing we bought the stock at fourteen dollars, so our our stop limit price will be at say fourteen dollars just to break even, but the activation price will be because we have so many shares. We have to give a gap at least about ten cents, you know. Because it will take time. Once the activation price is hit, strike, then it will, the next price will be, you know, that will be executed like a market, market price, you know, but not the market, but like, a, you know, automatically, whatever the next, the next uh, price of the stock, that will, what you'll get. But it will not be below the stock limit price. It will continuously sell, you know. The, the shares because the, the you know the stocks moves up and down and they 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 move very fast but uh, as long as the activation price is hit once it that is hit then it will automatically sell the next the, the next price as long as it does not go below the stock price that we place you know so we actually don't you know lose anything but if we sell everything if we sold all our our shares, we just break even basically, and we have nothing to lose. That means we bought the, the stocks very high, and, and and usually the stocks will keep going down and down, and then we can since we have available funds to you know to to spend to 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 trade, we can buy the stock at the lower price and then put a stop limit right away. Then the following day, you'll notice that the, this stock, the same stock, will start moving up very fast. And then we can put another stop. We adjust our stop limit price just below the current price, probably 50 cents below the current price. And we have already gained so much money there, you know, because of the number of shares we bought. We bought 50% of, of our funds. Imagine, 50%, if we have 300, that is 50%, that is a lot of money. And if we do this, you know, I figured that we can make in a single day, probably 50,000. How can you make that, you know, 50,000? The worst is 20,000 every day. And this will accumulate every day and without any loss at all from the time we started. Because you know the, the reason why I, I want you to we want you to put a stop limit on every time we buy stock because there are a lot of investment group also that that buys uh, stocks millions of shares and they are profit they, you know they once they they make uh, they have a, a, they, uh, you know once the stock have moved three three points higher. 
immediately they sell their stocks because they want to get the profit. And that's the reason why the stocks go down dramatically, you know, because when they, when, when it's, uh, not, when there's so many groups, you know, that, that, that uh, trade in stocks and, and we cannot control them. They, they can, they can sell millions of, of shares of their stocks and that can drop the, the price of the stocks. And if you don't put a stop limit, then you'll notice that you, your, your, the stock that you bought is as close, you know, is now below. You're now negative. You're ne you'll be negative and uh, you'll have to wait for a while before it goes up, you know, or recovers. So, so Joseph, my question is, what is our timetable if we dis if the group decides to pursue with this? It's almost 2021. Uh, well, uh, yeah, we have to have some timetable if the group is really interested in doing this. If they are really interested in doing this, you know, um, we have to to move uh, a little faster, you know, at least uh, before the second week, before the third week of January, we should have. It establish this already but uh, I have to talk to the CPA because uh, this involves a lot of accounting you know and the, the CPA the accounting will be involved very closely monitoring our investment and because they are they are going to be responsible to give us our K1 at the end of the year and they will you know how much investment how much we paid IRS because I know we'll make a lot of money. If we make a million in one year, that is 200 for the IRS, you know. We'll, we'll pay 200,000 to IRS and the 800 is our net. Uh, just, as a, just as a precaution, you know, I know Joseph, you said that people could get in and out of the, of the group. I think that's gonna pose a lot of accounting issues. So I think it's better we, if we all move as one you know, I mean, uh, discourage people from getting in and out. And yeah, so they cannot. Uh, they cannot get out until the end of the year because that is the tax time. You know, because it's too. If they get out in the middle of the year or first part of the year, that's not good because uh, it's so confusing. Because we have to sell the stock for them to, to give them their money. You know, that is not. You know, it should be a, a close to the end of the year if they want to get out. So yeah, we have to set up a corporation, do the articles of incorporation. And I think the, the contribution should be equal. So it should be, should be less of an accounting problem. That would be ideal, you know, we have everything is equal. So that is be less problem for the, for the uh, you know. And for all for of the us. Accountant. For all for of the us. Accountant. But the problem is the, no, I think, they can, I, I think they can set it up to where, for instance, depending on the type of corporation where, for instance, if it's like a million dollars, you get a million shares. So if you're interested in investing 20,000, then you get whatever, $20,000 worth of shares, you know, so 20,000 shares. So I don't think it's gonna be an accounting nightmare, even if some people invest say 10,000 because the accountant will create a cap table where he knows what amount of investment each investor has. That's really easy for the accountant. I think the problem lies where some people get in, some people get out. How do you compute how much money he, he has, you know, in, in the big scheme of things? So that's, that's gonna be an accounting nightmare. Uh, it can be done, but it will cost us money. So that's why I would discourage people from moving in and out of the, of the group. Yeah, unless, it, you know, I mean, obviously, if you really need the money, then it's it's okay. I mean, but there's got uh, no. there's to be needs, a, a needs, excuse me. Uh, needs is uh, next with the question. Um, I was wondering, aside from uh, equal equal investment, can't we make a commitment for the five years unless there's a life changing event? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what I mean. You know, we need to commit to the five years and then beyond that, then, you know, all bets are off. I mean, we, we dissolve the corporation or whatever. If you want to continue on, maybe some of us would want to continue on. Those that don't get out of the group and those that want to continue on then stay in the group, you know. 
but yeah, I think a minimum of five years. Uh, if you look at the track record of, of all the stuff that are in, you know, like I, I look at the track record of S&P 500, it's like in five years, it made like 53% or 10% a year. That's in no. five years, you know. So I think we will surpass that because of the way we approach it is different. We will always uh, surpass S&P because our, pro our approach is really, you know, very unique. Well, that's and the goal. Otherwise, we should just all invest in it. <laughs> because all, all we, we will see are gains and no losses at all. No yeah. losses. All gains. I guarantee you that because as soon as you put a stop limit, the only thing can, worse that can happen is, to, is uh, our stock gets, will sell automatically and we get our money back. And we have available funds that is available that we can buy at the lower price. And then that will make money, much more money than the following day or in the succeeding days because we bought it at the lower price. So what's the consensus of the group? Do you guys want to do this as a group? There's another way is uh, everyone will, will open their brokerage account and and then just go on, their, on our own. Joseph, are you going to try to talk to your accountant or attorney to see yeah, what? Yeah, I'm what going kind to, of, yeah, after the of, holidays, probably. What kind uh, of a company we need to, to form? Uh, yeah, I think it's a partnership. It's gonna be a partnership, according to my accountant brother in Chicago. He said, yeah. you cannot go make a company, but a partnership, like a partnership, because this is a, like a group. LLC? Is it a limited partnership with a with a general partner? I'm not familiar with that. Okay. Yeah, I mean that's that's what I mean. Just ask the accountant what the best way to set it up, because I yeah. think too uh, in the interest, like you said, there would be maybe five people that would be responsible in, or at least would have the keys to making the investment work. You know, like like if you're gonna start trading online, there has to be a person that does the trading. Uh, oh, but yeah. It but it can't be just one person in case something happens, God forbid, to that person. There has to right. be another person that can one has to be good out or, or whatever, do the, do the trading. So we have to have all those uh, provisions, you know. Yeah, we have to be also quick, you know, because uh, every time the market moves very fast and we have to to be you know on time because the code is real time as soon as we you know we we get the price to to buy at the lower at the dip then we have to execute that that one that will execute would be should be should be should be really fast and very good in computer i cannot do it myself <laughs> my vision is very poor <laughs> could i see it will take me time just, we, should, know. we should give the group a, a deadline if we are really serious about this. Maybe you uh, can put Joseph. Put up uh, the names of really those who are interested and then give the minimum amount that will be contributed by each. Minimum, maximum. Uh, why why don't we just uh, post at Viber if we want to join or not? If we want to join or not, we just post it at Viber. That would be good. There was a list, uh, I think we, had, we were 43 or 44 at the very start. And I think the, the last time I saw it was 47, but this, that includes the, the, those, the uh, well, Philippine-based. Yeah. Some people were just- Can I unmute me? I have some questions. Okay. All right. There is that Mildred, hi. I have a question. Hi, Merry Christmas, everyone. Hi, Mildred. This is my first time to join the Zoom. <laughs> uh, I have some questions though. I, um, if we form this group, um, is it, there should be um, a question whether we will form one group with uh, uh, same amount of money or one group with several amounts of money. 
So when we choose the other one, which is um, the investment amount um, of different kinds, there should be a limit high because some uh, multimillionaires of our classmates are, can put 50,000 and some of us who are poor can only put 1,000. So the shares were gonna be so diluted. So I would look into like putting an investment limit low amount an investment limit high amount. If we have a consensus of whether we were gonna choose that part uh, part B uh, group, which is the different kinds of amount. Because the part A group that most of us uh, in the outset said that we, will, we are willing to put like 20, 25,000 each. And I think 43 or 40 people want that. Uh, another question is that I am not inclined, <laughs> Job, as, as you suggested that I'll be the one to collect the money. The collection should be, uh, divided like between the East Coast and the West Coast. And the other thing is that there should be a time frame for uh, entering into this group. People like us not right now in this uh, uh, Zoom is like 40 plus. And if we are willing to do and vote now, then 40 is a majority over the 60 that we want. So we can at least um, see and have a step one uh, progress in our, uh, you know, making this company work or this partnership work. Otherwise, we're going to have another Zoom meeting and uh, we're going to miss all the things that, that uh, the stock is going up right now. Um, and we don't want to do that. We don't want to waste like four weeks of thinking of whether we will decide or not decide because this is a yes or no for everyone, the 43 plus of us that are in this Zoom right now. We're only and person, the other point right is, the other point are, uh, as um, Monchu was saying that the shares, if we, if we choose the part B group, the shares will be divided among us. So people with 20, 25,000 will have this X multiple uh, shares and the other ones that have 1,000 or 2,000 oh. 5,000 shares, we're gonna have the least amount of shares. And that is, I think is not a good scenario for my personal, um, you know, scenario is that I want the, the uh, selection number A, which is like one for all and all for one. If we choose 20, fine. If we use 25, fine with me. If we use 10, it's also fine, but I think that is a better way, okay. And also, uh, I agree with whoever was saying, I think it was Boy, um, who was saying that the TD Ameritrade is very good, uh, which I have, and uh, as per recommendation of Jopez and also Robin Hood. So um, these are the things that I sort of jot down as the first, first, first timer in the Zoom meeting. I really appreciate your time. Happy New Year. We're only, we're only actually 34 right now. 34. 34. Okay, not 43. Hello. So, um, yeah, I think a lot of our classmates are not able to invest uh, 20,000. So, but they are interested in joining, which is the whole reason. Or because I've been, I, I've been involved in a lot of partnerships, and yeah, everybody has a different number that they can invest in. Uh, although it's human nature, some people obviously are jealous of those that have more, especially if the market is going up and some, I mean, that's, that's human nature. But I think for everybody to be able to invest, I, I think my suggestion in informing the company and, and having X number of shares to be bought. So we encourage that you buy 20,000 each. If you cannot afford it, we should allow some people to buy, say, 5,000 shares out of the million shares available. Uh, okay, but but um, we should have a lim low uh, low limit, correct? Right. The, yeah. high, the minimum, high limit there should be is a minimum. 20. The high limit is 20. And what is your suggestion for the low limit? I, I don't know. I mean, I don't have a feel for what, what our other classmates want to Hello. do. May I, Hello. May I ask a question? May I ask a question? Please do. Oh, yeah. Uh, 
I would like, uh, yeah, the the suggestion of uh, money is quite monchuno, it's quite good. And my question is, uh, after a year, can can we increase our share? For example, you have more than you want to increase. Is that possible or is that practical? Yeah, I think I think in some instances, for instance, if we really want to have a million dollars, okay. So let's just say we were only able to raise $800,000. So some of those may want to buy the rest of the shares, right? So let's just say Chito wants to buy 40,000 out of the what's remaining. And then other people will want to buy more shares and it goes to a million dollars. So those that are investing less than 20,000, for instance, after a year, the, the market's doing well, the company's doing well, they want to buy more shares. Well, then you can buy it from those people that have more shares, but then the value is going to be different mm -hmm. because then you have to reassess how much the company is worth. So for mm -hmm. instance, today it's worth a million. A year from now, it may be worth 2 million. So your, your one share may be worth more than $1,000 now. So if, if, if anybody's interested in buying one more share, well, it may be a different price, you see. But yeah, I mean, you could do that. You could buy shares among each other. It just has to be recorded for the accountant to follow it when he issues the K-1s, you know, at the end of the year. Make any sense? Or it may be less, you know, if the, if the company's not doing well. At that point, you may want to buy. Buy low, sell high, right? <laughs> Except those that are selling now are going to sell low. <laughs> Okay. I think what we what they understand was uh, we place the money up uh, for five years, no in and out. Mm -hmm. My question is, okay, if, if you could add now, when your explanation is quite good, and I understand. Thank you, much. You've got on the left side. There's a spot there. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So what should we decide right now? Should we decide on the minimum to participate? What do you think, Joseph? You, you, you. Um, well, if our target is really, uh, each of us will make a uh, close to a million dollar. Our, um, if that is our target, then we have to meet at least one point two million as our capital to meet that goal. That will take uh, that will take us around three years to make each of us have one million dollar. Because uh, this is a you know this uh, our strategy is really different because uh, we will have no losses almost every day we will make money no matter what whether it's a bear market bull market we make more money even in the down market because we can we have available funds to buy at the dip and that's how we make more money because when they go up that's a lot of money in our pocket and then mm -hmm. we just put a stop limit and that gains will never go away it will sell off if it the, if the market drops and we kept our capital gains and we can buy a more share at the lower price and Joe that is the, oh, Joe the question uh, the question is what is the upper and the lower limit? Oh, the, the upper and lower limit. Of the investment. Of each one. Yeah. I, well, um, yeah, if you were to ask me, at least 10, uh, the upper could be, one could be 20 to 30,000, 30,000 is the upper and the lower would be 10,000. Okay, that sounds good. Sounds good. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. So I, I, I think initially for myself, I, I would be willing to put twenty thousand, and then uh, depending on a, on what happens at the cutoff date, on how much money we were able to raise, then the rest of the group could either buy more buy more uh, at that point to reach the 1.2 million capital that joseph is implying we should have by the way monchu when i created the list in the beginning uh there were more numbers because 
everybody, I mean, the numbers went up because we open it for members who can contribute less. I don't know what less is. Uh, so yeah. if our minimum is 10 and 30 is the maximum, I predict the number 34 that we are now will even go down as far as the numbers of people interested. So the question is, we want, uh, for Joseph's sake, uh, we won't be able to reach our target of 1.2 million. So, I mean, it depends. Majority here may be willing to put 30,000. So, 30, yeah, 30,000. So I guess for the 34 people around, are we all agreeable to at least the minimum? I mean, can we just express that in Bible? Because we, as I agree with Mildred, we can't wait too long. So all, let's those, all those in favor say aye. Aye. <laughs> just, just aye. Say aye. All those opposed say in nay. Favor of, in favor aye. of what? Nay. In favor, in favor of the minimum. maximum and minimum. In favor of the 10,000 minimum. A 10,000 minimum. That's what aye. Joseph said. Aye. So anyone, aye. probably the better question is who's not in favor. <laughs> well, who's not in favor of the 10 minimum? <laughs> You know, uh, excuse me, guys. I'm not even sure I'm going to join, see? So uh, I'm just here to, to learn. So uh, you guys may be some Come on, come on Eric. Come on, Eric. Know? It's just, it's just <laughs> your play money. You, you need to join. No, no, no. It's, it's not that. It's, it's business. Well, yeah. Pinsan. Kasali ka dapat pinsan. Uh, there you go. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. It's, it's not go. that. As I, I was trying to explain to you guys, it's just it's, it's business. So I'm, I'm Eric, still thinking Eric, about it. Okay. And so, that's okay. Uh, we have one, Eric. Anybody else? All right. So, so I guess we're thirty-three. Agreeable for the ten thousand minimum. Is that what we're? Thinking? Elsie, Elsie. I think uh, Chito, you're, you're taking notes, right? Chito, maybe Chito can put out a, no a notice on Viber, and then we'll okay. clarify it in Viber. So we'll finalize the list with our right. proper. Until, until you do it, you and do yeah, it. Yeah, I, I can. Uh, we can reinforce this on Viber, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then see who still are in and uh, if there are people that would so, want to go so in the big, uh, minimum. Uh, the big part of the decision is the minimum and the maximum. I wonder who will put 30,000 like Monchu. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you need, and you need to you need to have a timeline, a period. Oh, yeah, I, really just, I, I really just want to join the group in, in the interest of being a... Mm -hmm. member of the class you know um, I, I agree that's I'm like Eric I'm, I'm a little bit hesitant uh, to join but I, but I would like to join because you know I mean I haven't really been that active with the class you know and I want this to be an opportunity to be in solidarity with everyone especially those that have not invested in the market you know plus I agree with better better mention about charity foundation so hopefully we when we succeed we have a good source of income for helping others. So for me, just like Monchu, uh, my financial advisor vehemently opposed me joining. <laughs> I don't blame him. <laughs> we, have been, we have been with him since 1992. Plus, you know, we're 70 years old. We don't have any heirs. Uh, there you go, Chito. You're the 30,000 guy. <laughs> <laughs> Put me as your beneficiary, Chito. So, okay, so uh, anyway, but I'll just join because I I'm in charge of the Zoom also, unless somebody wants to take over. <laughs> and the YouTube oh, video. Yeah. You're out of luck there, Chito. It's you. <laughs> okay, I'll gamble. I'll gamble the amount whatever Monchi will gamble. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, so far we decided Let's the call minimum, it gambling. <laughs> uh, we decided the minimum 10, maximum 30. Uh, get the final list uh, via Viber. And what's the timeline? When do we start? Before the end of the year. Uh, da Dante, excuse me, because uh, we were cut. Dante? Yeah, go ahead, Sonia. Oh, uh, as to the numbers, it just came to my mind. If we give a minimum of 5,000, maybe the total, some total will reach higher. Oh, yeah, so I we, agree. 
Uh, could we go, could we give others a chance? For example, today I, I almost forgot, no? I thought it was tomorrow. But if we give the 5,000, it might be easier to reach our target of more than 340 or whatever. Because, you're, because you're hoping there'll be more members to join. Yes, yes. With 5,000, I think it, it'd be easier and maybe we can reach the target of hi higher. It's some total of more than 20 or 10 minimum. Okay, do we change the minimum? Are you uh, are you limiting the investors to just members of the class or yes any relatives on the first like <laughs> children are allowed to invest their five I, I, hours, you know? it's gotta get it's no, it's gotta get more complicated no 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 I mean, I mean you can always put it in your name you know if it's your children so probably mm -hmm. yeah Dante may I suggest that to communicate with you privately. Because some people may be you know, hesitant to join because to put the, this is the amount I will contribute. So you can do it privately. Just say, communicate with you how much you want to contribute. Jopez, is 5,000 too low? Or what do you think of that number? 5,000? Uh, they can start 5,000. Then they can add, make it 10,000. Know, uh, yeah, yeah, I think the amount of money is really just an accounting issue. It is not yeah. going to change the fact that you want to raise 1.2 million. Yes, you that's know. my point, Bonchuna. If we if we want to reach that 1.2, uh, uh, a lot of people can even uh, invest at 5,000. If you make it a, a, a 10, we lost the other people. Our, our batchmate, I mean. I'm in agreement with that. I mean, if, yeah, I, I mean, I agree. So we're not Thank changing. You. We're changing the. Are we changing the minimum to five thousand, and the maximum is still thirty grand? Right. Yeah. Okay. We'll do that. So we start collecting uh, Dante privately. Uh, we meaning the list, yes. not the money. I'm not collecting. No, no, no. collecting the names. <laughs> <laughs> and then probably you can communicate with because we haven't decided who's well, we, leading this group. We'll announce the main, the main, this the minimum and the maximum, uh, and we need to get the final list. Uh, people can express it via Viber or through privately, personal message. Privately, personal yeah. message. Do that. Yeah, and, yeah. And, uh, and our timeline is end of January. Is that right? End of January. That's too, That's too long. Gen end of January. Uh, no, that's to make, make the articles of incorporation. I think I think there's a little bit of problem with having accountants and lawyers move that fast, but most yeah, of them have templates, you know, that are already set, so they don't have to redo. I mean, they don't have to start from scratch. If you explain to them the composition of the group and what our goals are, yeah. when you know, I mean, they should be able to get you give you a template that says everything already. Just they just punch in their computer, change the name. And it's done, you know. But still, there has to be some time. I think thirty days is realistic, you know. I I, I agree. I think the timeline will be a, will be uh, will def depend on Joseph's meeting with his lawyer or his accountant. I think because we have to start the EIN, isn't it? Yeah, uh, I'm going to meet probably next next week. I'll make an appointment to meet okay. uh, the accountant. Okay. Yeah, I think they can only apply for the EIN once they have the company set up because they have the name of the company and all that. And then they apply for the EIN and it usually takes about a week. It comes back, you know. I was told that uh, we, they can do it for us, EIN and the, and the company, the article of incorporation. They can yeah. do it for us, but no I'm problem. Sure they can ask for a fee. Uh, fee, I, don't, I have no idea how much the fee probably doesn't cost much because um, Job probably... is, Joseph, you only mentioned Philippines and US. You didn't mention Canada. It should be easy for us, isn't it? Yeah, Canada and US just the same. Okay. You know, it doesn't make any difference. Okay, thanks. You'll be given K1. To, except as... you have to pay more. Your 20,000 <laughs> is... <laughs> Twenty-five for us or something. <laughs> we have to pay more. I yeah. agree. 
We'll never know with the new administration in the US. <laughs> yes. Any any uh, any more important issues though? I I think to, um, Tony Gabarda had a quick quick question to Jopes. Uh, will will there be uh, fees uh, if we? Uh, what is that again? I didn't uh, hear you. Uh, Tony, you had a question. What's the question? Does Ameritrade a charge for for its transaction? Transaction fees if it's in the millions. Jopes. What? How much what do you that? pay? How much you how much do you pay in a trade? Uh, they don't charge us for a trade. For in in uh, we in fact we don't do it online. We call them up and yeah, for any amount, I guess with Jopes. Uh, so he could probably pull strings and tell them that we have a million two to invest and. Yeah, if you have a, a, that kind of man, a money to invest, then they will not charge you at all. Nothing, right. to, nothing, no charge for the trade. They're okay. trying to attract more clients. Right, because they're all doing that. You know, Swap is doing that. Fidelity is doing that. America Trade, E Trade. So for every trade we do, because we'll be we'll be selling and buying almost every day. If if our you know stocks get sell get sold, then we'll we'll buy at the lowest uh, price. So that is almost every day. Just, and we just, keep be, just be just be ready to pay capital gains at the end of the year, guys. Not not this one. Not one. Oh, you just pour it out. So who is the co-director of Jopes? Monchu. What? Yeah. We need the co-director. Monchu. Director. <laughs> Monchu, boy, right? Uh, you never know. <laughs> so, Jopas Monchu. Opel's in there. Uh, boy, Opel. Right? Opel should be in there, you know. Opel. I'm not really sure. <laughs> anyway, um, <clears throat> excuse me. We could use your technical analysis, of course. The execution issue is really yeah. a very valid concern. Yes. Based on my experience, even if I'm right in front of the computer minutes before the actual start of the trading, and I have made up my mind as at what level I'm going to buy, at yeah. the exact point of execution, if you're not fast enough, there has to be speed of fingers together with a very good internet. Right. Um, yeah. You could still miss the desired level you want to get in. You could put all so that the was numbers. what I asked Jopes earlier. Yeah. We will do the execution. So that's what really is also um, bothering him now. Who will do the actual execution? Yeah, I'm not a day trader, so I'm not, and I'm still working full time. So it would be tough for me to, timing wise, to, uh, to make the trades, you know. Unless we put all the 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 limits and the stops oh, yeah. there when we buy the, the, the stop, you know. Oh, what's the yeah. proof on it? Yeah. Is it the AD proof? Did say it on this one. Slightly smoking, but not. Yeah. Anything else? Forty percent alcohol volume. Yeah. So eighty, eighty proof. So before we proceed, shall we ask uh, Tony Cabarda to say the closing yeah. prayer? Drink before you there are other before we talk of other <laughs> issues. Three of us drink the whole bottle. <laughs> Three of us. Tony, are you there? You need to be really well on your exam. Tony. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, let's start with the close. Let's let's yeah. do the closing yeah. prayer. And then we can. If you are still interested to continue? We we will continue with the discussion because some people have to go. Any other questions before we close? Yeah, we can continue after for those who are still interested. Okay. okay. In Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you, Lord, for all the blessings that we receive. Thank you, Lord, for protecting us from the virus. And we are able to do almost normal things here with 
distancing and wearing protective covering. So Heavenly Father, you held our discussion, Lord. Just guide us and guide the leaders of this group who are planning to do investment, mm -hmm. Lord, for uh, being a benefactor to those who are in need, fundraising for uh, charitable donation, Lord, for your own glory. So, Lord, give us the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And, Lord, just if this group is formed that protect the assets that will grow and be used for, the, or for your glory and to help the less fortunate members of our society, particularly the Philippines. So, Heavenly Father, as we part ways, just protect us protect our properties, our investments. They will grow and continue to flourish according to your divine will. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, so now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Good night. Don't forget the birthday Zoom tomorrow, same time, same channel. So there's another Zoom meeting. Birthday for the December celebrants. Birthday <laughs> celebrants. Well, we can discuss this, some questions, unanswered questions then. Not that tomorrow, there's so many, <laughs> many participants who submitted their video presentations. Okay. Maybe today, if, they, if people still want to stay, it's up to you. To, to have, discuss have another any questions to about have to leave. those who have, need to leave can leave now or those who want to stay have some questions to our experts or if you everybody wants I'll, I'll be the last one to end okay Bye. Merry i have nowhere to go bye-bye there's a few questions here okay. or right. suggestion okay okay uh beta said we should have the list earlier and uh, Jing mentioned about you can buy with a limit order and it will be executed at the price you put. Is that how it works or job? job yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you have to we'll start with the limit order, uh, limit order, and then uh, if we, we get it, then it's fine. If we don't, we'll try again next time. But uh, we have, it's better to get, uh, or sometimes if the price is right, we can get a market price. If, you know, if, there, if the, the market is down and the price is look very attractive, then we don't need to get, we need, we need to get it at the market to get through, you know, because it's not easy to get in, you know, once there's a opportunity to, to buy it at the low price. <clears throat> that doesn't happen all the time, but, uh, but if, we, if as much as possible, we try to buy it at limit price. Mm -hmm. but the, the problem with the buy limit price is when will you uh, be able to buy it? And then when will you be able to put your stop limit? Yeah, um, we, we buy a limit price that will, will, will uh, you know, as soon as we, you know, uh, that will, as soon as you buy the stop limit and it gets executed, <coughs> then we, we, we we immediately put the stop limit because uh, as soon as we, you know, as we bought the stock and get filled or executed, that's the time we, we start putting the stop limit. Sometimes it takes hours to um, go through if it's a stop uh, by limit. To by limit? Uh, constantly. <laughs> yeah, uh, it takes, uh, depends how many shares. So, you know, sometimes because we, it depends how many shares. If we there are thousands of shares, of course, it will take a little time, few minutes, but they're pretty fast, you know. It's it should I think should get executed as long as we get in, and because uh, the market goes up and down, and as long we get the limit price, it will keep uh, you know, it will keep buying it until you know we get the the all all get filled or the you know the number of shares we need. So it will peel eventually, it will peel.
So because well, the so market sure. goes yeah. very fast, you know. Mm-hmm. In one second, in one second, they, they can feel, you know, thousands of shares. Because there's so many are, are, are in the, you know, are in stock markets. So many people buying and selling, you know. So one we are not the only ones. Yeah. We are, there are one, millions. To change the topic a little bit. Uh, one concern of those from the Philippines is how can they contribute more than ten thousand dollars to send to the U.S. because of the concern of the limit of dollar transfers? So that should be considered also because I, some people talk to me about how uh, from the Philippines there will be this, the transferring the money to the U.S. They it, then they have to transfer it uh, little by little, I guess, <laughs> until it gets. <laughs> I get so we to won't 10, again, we, again, you we won't be able to, to reach the, the our our goal. Yeah, there's no easy way for them to send the money, you know, because of the limitations in the Philippines. That's the big problem. How they can send the money in dollars because they are they are restricted to send money in dollars because the Philippines doesn't want dollars be you know sent out out of the philippines so the problem that is a big problem that's a challenge how they can you know transmit those uh, pesos into dollars i don't know how to to answer that you know is all still there i'm yeah. still here what, what do you think on, about a, on a facetious manner, maybe that? I should we should be requesting Joseph to advance first the dollars for us, <laughs> then we can pay him overtime <laughs> gradually. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, oh, this is a serious concern that I don't know. Maybe we should be discussing these issues with a banker, like banks with global presence, like BPI, BDO, and see how we can go around this kind of limitation and restriction. Question of L: Is there a time limit for the for for this amount limit? Uh, per there's only or per, per, per they're very strict. Month? They're very strict regarding this kind of restriction, limiting oneself to only half a million pesos or ten thousand dollars. So yeah, they, it really poses some serious concern if we need or interested to really shell out 20,000 or send over 20,000. So I don't know how we can go around that. So that's why maybe, yeah, for example, assign the half a million to my son and let him be the one to posing himself as the one sending the, the half of it. Then I do the half of it. I mean, these are options that can be done. Just thinking out loud, not sure if it can be done. So first things first, we really have to talk with the bank and I'm sure this is not the first time. I'm sure there are several occasions when there is a need for this kind of transaction. See how they go through it. I also, uh, I think you can make use of your relatives, you know, like yeah. you have relatives in the U.S. and make them put the money up for them. Uh-huh. And, and just make arrangements because, you know, we all have expenses when we go to the Philippines, you know, so mm-hmm. you could probably- I, I thought Joseph is my relative. <laughs> <laughs> it's all our relatives, you know. <laughs> Adopted. Adopted relatives. And, and actually, Joseph is a cousin of my wife, so. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Sonny. Sonny yeah. is my cousin. I'm also we used to Joseph. <laughs> Just, uh, because I, I, I'm taking him or him. <laughs> him or him. Uh, kanina umalis ako. Can I have a question? Sino talaga magpa-facilitate na sa atin? No, not me. <laughs> uh, Dante, who mentioned me earlier, but I, I don't think I can really do it. So, Maybe Betha, you should be the one ano, doing it. Ako pa nang zero knowledge eh. <laughs> no, it's just a matter of okay, ano, no? just for the concern of ano, sending Saka, over the money to USA. I am still in active practice. Alam mo naman ng OB. Uh-huh. Dito uh-huh. yan kung magtrabaho. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> you kaya. I, I have a zero knowledge on this. That's why I'm asking who is going to facilitate and we owe him her so much regarding this because I know how difficult it will be. But because of your of your uh, passion and your I, I favorite kasi, kasi yung word na altruistic ano <laughs> altruistic. <laughs> uh, ano? Is, Isabel ko who is is not here but uh, she has uh, very solid firm connections with the banks. It's not really so, sacred if you're enjoying it, di ba? Uh, that's uh-huh. the most part there. Kung ala kung may know how lang ako. Um, you can count on me, but I'm not an expert to this. Talagang uh, uh, I go lang for the yung objective natin. Uh, that's why I mentioned about uh, I just followed needs. I'm so glad that needs had uh, um, mentioned about um, yeah. giving the ten percent of ev- whatever income, because and then then, but eventually, ma- kung we have so much, na hindi naman natin madadala yan, di ba? Uh, sure. Yung ano na lang, uh, kaya para to make it more in the future, maybe we can have a charity foundation. It's tax deduction also to us, to to all of you. Dito wala yata, hindi yata na nadididak eh. <laughs> uh, but in the US, yes. So so. I'm, I just would like it uh, clarified and will be put into the minutes kung sino ang magti-take charge. Pero hindi talaga kaya ng isa pa looking at our age and so on. We have to be practical about it. Actually, Beta, you don't have to know anything about uh, stock investing. You just have to know your friends who will join and collect the money from them. That will be your duty. <laughs> mm-hmm. Lily, Lily Marcos is still around. I remember her daughter works in a bank. Uh, maybe through Lily, through her daughter, I mean, uh, that can be of a big help. Lily, where is she? Maybe hear from you. Marcos, Lily. Yeah, yeah. I'm you're, still, you're I still see her. No, my daughter is not connected with banking. Uh, okay, okay. I I remember you mentioning that she's with the bank or what. Your son is it a son? HSBC, but not in banking. Ah, okay. Mm-hmm. So, thank uh, you. Yeah, I think when is more on the collection? Yeah, it's really more on that part of collecting and transmitting to USA. Oh, I see. Um, kasi ang um, the way I transmit to my children is directly from from my bank, then directly na dun sa kanila. Um, ang problema, uh, they, they, the bank doesn't want to transmit pagka, parang over 3,000 that you buy the dollars and then transmit it directly to, to the account in the US. So, what I, uh, kung pero kung nandun na talaga sa bank ko yung perang yon, and then you transmit to the children, tinatanong lang usually, why are you giving? Or, Uh, well, that's uh, twenty thousand dollars is only one thousand one million. So, sa sabi ko lang, I'm going to buy equipment. You know, what we buy ko don. That's it. <laughs> so, yun lang ang dapat. Pero usual lang na matanong niya. It's not money laundering. Ang inaano nila kasi money laundering eh. Uh-huh. Uh, kung nandyan na talaga sa bank uh, account mo yung amount since from the very start, so you are not just transferring money to using the bank and so on. And uh, yung uh, $20,000, medyo madali pang ipadala yon because I tried it already. With my in, one, in one single transaction, Beta? Huh? One, one single transaction of $20,000, do they allow that? Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Pero yeah. kung $10,000, okay lang. O, okay lang. They so allow it. So as long wire, wire ready. Transfer, beta? Huh? It's a wire transfer, or how, how is it transferred? There's a fee, right? Yes, there's a fee, of course. Yes, yeah. Oh, it's a wire transfer, yeah. Uh, ang, ang, ang ko, I, I, that's why I invited my daughter to, to be in, because I requested her to be my dummy. Uh, so, uh, parang wala, apo, wala yung pangalan ko dyan. 
she will be the one he was kaya syempre anyway i will show that also the taxes and so on being my dummy kasi syempre ano din sila they have their own you know um concerns about it na address out na nami yeah if you use her if you use her name then she will be liable for the taxes in the us yes yeah so for the taxes syempre eh, investment po yun eh di syempre right. also the taxes right syempre i don't want to burden my daughter for it and uh, we i have already an arrangement with that um kaya i think that answers the question if you can transmit 20000 like you said then that, that shouldn't be a problem as long yeah. as the money is already in the bank you know as It's long like, as it's not like you're using the bank to transmit it that the yeah. money is not in the bank you know? Oh, very difficult if you try to buy dollars from the banks they can make you wait for even seven to ten days before they're ready with the dollars you're buying from them that i i haven't tried that yet but maybe we i could ask uh hmm. to buy dollars in the bank but kasi yung nagpadala ko noon inipon ko na kasi yun eh nandun na sa banko ko noon hmm. so i have the dollar account so it transfer ko yun sa kanila So it's easier na hindi naman sila it's not it's not what you called money laundering kasi hindi mo naman ginamit yung bank nila to transmit because I already have that money in the bank. Parang ganun. Yun lang ang experience ko uh, that what that I could share. Um so before that, that's why I was the more on the last list with the Dante's list kasi inaral ko muna yon and then I have to ask my daughter to help me out. If we, if they did not they did not agree with it of course I will not invest Schindler's list Dante So <laughs> 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 kung to kaya hindi so, ko masagot yung iba I cannot answer for them Ah uh, Chito uh, you're still around are you Yeah otherwise this will be otherwise <laughs> <the answer>. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I forgot. So, if I end it, when we create the final list, we should get the name and the the amount of contribution they want. Right. Yes. right, right. So that right. Means it has so to be we private. don't have to publish it in the class Viber. So it has to be private message then. Okay. So yeah, yung mga nahihiya na magbigay ng fifty thousand ga ni Monchu. Eric, yun na malis si Eric. Ay, sumali ni Eric, bira talaga. Eric. Oh. Ah, uh, Eric Bing. Oh, si Bing. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, uh thanks for your time, guys, and happy I, new year if we don't see each other. Uh, yeah, tomorrow. tomorrow. Get the Zoom. The oh, yeah, tomorrow. Mildred, tomorrow. Mildred. 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 tomorrow, yeah. Yung yung concern ni Mildred na five Let's say we decide 5000 minimum and 30000 investment. Wala well, namang concern doon other than people have more shares, is that right? Yeah, they will be they will have their share accordingly, you know, okay. the proportion the propor- or the percentage. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think Joseph uh was saying initially, I don't know if you're still here Joseph, if you Yeah, I'm here. That we have to reach 1.2 million. That's the goal. If we don't reach it then What? we don't do it right so we have to try to reach that goal one way or the other with, with among the five to the 30,000 investors is that true to just joe jopes yeah he can yeah, feel in the that difference that was originally our target if we don't reach it 1.2 million no go okay, can i have a question that's what I have we a decide question. i have a question uh chito okay Okay, what's your question? Uh, yes. Yeah. Um listen, um we have I mean the the steps that we have to do. Therefore, as I see as a conclusion of this Zoom meeting is that we have uh before we do the collection as we agreed for the five and the 30 as the low and the high. Before we do the collection, we should have like a company set up yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, accounting done and a banking done and and an open bank account correct 
before yeah. collections can be done because collections will be uh, will be done and sent to the bank account of the company, correct? Not to an individual member of the group. It has to, that's why we have to have that company done first, counting done, bylaws done, and then mm -hmm. the bank, uh, like wherever the bank account is, and people were gonna send the money and deposit to the bank account. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. Because we're talking of collections right now, yeah, of how be, many people are will be going. in the name of the company. Basically, the checks or the will be made under the name of the company and it's deposited into the account of the company. Right. Okay. I think I think I um, I think I'm mistaken there in a way that before we go and make a company name and a company account, I think we should have the number of people and uh, and the uh, the total to be 1.2. Once we have 1.2 um, uh, account, um, I mean money, then we go ahead and do all of the steps that I just said. Because if we don't reach 1.2, what's the use of going to uh, an accountant? What's the use of opening a bank account? What's the use of uh, like collecting, you know, from 30 people if, if we are not up to that 1.2. I think I think Dante has to be the one to look at the list, have people yeah. tell you yeah. privately, okay, Dante yeah. are gonna put on, on just put your 5, private... you put the other 5,000 for me, Dante. Yeah, just so, <laughs> so I think that's, that's the thing that we have to do first, correct? Well, that's the time frame you have to do. Number one, how many people and what is the amount? Did we come up with the amount? Yes or no? If it's yes, then we go to the accountant to the next step. To the next step, because we cannot go and look and go and, and collect the money right now or, or no. do I whatever with it's, the it's, accountant. I think so the reason we should be able to come up with it after the Zoom meeting tomorrow. You know, you you, you put out a notice again to everybody. Yeah, I think I think Dante. Dante, I would, I would recommend that Dante be the one to do all the list and people can just email you, viber you privately. Dante, are you still there? Yeah, I'm okay with it. Yeah, but I think, you, I think I, you I agree are... with the, No, I agree, Mildred, with the hierarchy you mentioned, but somehow the base on the calls I get when I was creating the list, Oh my God! I hope we we succeed, but I I I can't. I don't predict we'll reach the target of one point two. Kala ko sabi ni Joseph, pwede na kahit less than one point two. So I'm not sure. I mean, I'll go ahead with with helping to create the list. Let's see what but we can get. Let's yeah. Let's see how. Yeah. yeah. First, first, we... that's what that's what we have to Play do now. Year. Like we have yeah. Dante. We should have a time frame. Are, can you do it in one week? Can people can commit well, themselves I, to say in one I'm, week? I'm, uh, Mildred, yes. I'm actually writing it as we speak. Excuse me, can, can I? Uh, can I can speak for a while? I I, I sure. heard that Joseph was saying even if we don't uh, reach one point two, what we could what we could collect, he will go on with that. That's what I heard a while ago. Is heard, correct, uh, Josh? Joseph? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that will be fine, you know. We so, don't so reach 1.2, we will so make that point. up eventually. No. We will make that up because uh, there are stocks that we can best, not necessarily okay. Apple, that makes a thousand, a thousand percent, one nine hundred to one thousand no. percent in, in a year. So, what's there's, the there are couple. So, so I, I mean, Mildred, what you suggested is okay, we'll still go through the, the process. But I'll, I won't mention about the 1.2 million goal. No, no, okay, okay. We'll just see how. Okay, Dante, if Joseph was saying that it is X number of 1,800,000, whatever that target point is, and we should have, I'd say, okay, the list or other people. If we can't reach 1.2 and we have one or 1.1, or 1 .1, then yeah. that's it, right. correct? Yeah. yeah. But yeah. but his original thing was 1.2. That's why I mentioned 1.2. But I agree. you know, but you know, as long as we have 
I think, I think as far as I'm concerned, this is the very first step that we have to do. I, I very agree. first step after this very important Zoom meeting that we have. I think it's very important that people uh, can commit themselves. Are we doing it or not? Because if they say, oh, they are not, then they really are not. So yeah. you can't really force them. So, like, you know what I mean? If people can just put a little bit, then it's fine. But people have to commit somehow. Uh, the answer should be yes or no, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, otherwise we're gonna be waiting for a long time. I think it, if you put a deadline and then they can, can up can make up that list and then give it to Joseph and make him decide whether it's a go or not. Oh, okay, that's relevant information. What's our deadline to to for to be in the final list? I don't know. I don't know. You guys will have to say that. So let's say um, mid January. Wednesday. I don't know. Earlier. Wednesday. Wednesday. What, what do we One mean? week. One week. Wednesday. Okay. Uh, if, if people it, want it's a. Uh, if people Excuse are really me. interested, they will commit themselves. If they're not, they will not. Yeah, so, yeah. that's, that's why. Think if they will commit, they will say yes. If yeah, not, they, then they won't. Much time. No. Probably the end of the year is fine, 31st. Yeah, end of the year is OK. Oh, that's only five days. OK. Yes, yeah. the end of the year sounds good. You should be able to know now if you, if you can do it oh, or not. OK, OK. Yeah, I'll write the deadline. Yeah, the deadline will gonna be right, and they can just say they viber you individually, you know, in such a way that it's so private, and then you can put the list on the viber people, class. People thing. can even put a range on what they're willing to invest between five to ten or five to fifteen, whatever you know. Or yeah, yeah, that that's a better that's a better idea, I think. Want you? I like that idea. Like say for example, yeah. uh, somebody will gonna say, okay, I'm gonna commit uh, five to eight right now. But maybe it will change to five to ten. But that, yeah. that oh, I think that's one that's aspect good. that you can tell the people. Okay, when they well, viber you, Dante, I'm not sure how much. So you can tell them, okay, can you give me a range? And uh -huh. again, we can we can measure uh, the amount, or we can tally the amount from that because yeah. we are not doing a five to twenty. You know, that's it should be like five to eight or five to ten instead of like five to thirty, which is impossible. That's just my suggestion. Or, or twenty yeah, to I, thirty, as in the case of cheaper, you know. Huh? <laughs> or twenty to fifty, as in the case of cheaper. <laughs> you. Monchu. a millionaire, John Monchu. Monchu, if you pay one point two, I will just give the list. Hi, that's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you? I'll that's just... your play money. Oh. <laughs> if you want, if you want there to be a murder in the family in, in the group here, <laughs> what happened anyway, to him? <laughs> anyway, you have uh, life insurance uh, more than one million, so it's okay. Yes, you should. <laughs> Dante, can you summarize then what was mentioned by what was discussed again with Mildred? I will wait. See, see Dante. I'm already writing it. UST Medicine Class 74 Investment Zoom Meeting. Proposals to determine the final members of the group and the start date. The deadline to express your interest in joining the investors group is December 31, 2020. I should put that at the end. Joseph, is. Me I should not mention the meeting. Minimum investment is 5,000. Maximum investment is 30,000. And then uh, please express your interest and commitment in joining the investors group by private message, including the 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 amount you plan to invest. So, but I'll mention uh, the range of amount. You should order, put the range in order to create the final list. So it has it, to be it has it, to be simple. So the it, range is between five thousand to thirty thousand. You know, range and all. Needs a question. I suggest that you remove the word interest. Firm commitment. That's oh, correct. Okay, okay. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. But I should give us Joseph. We're sure that the deadline is December 31st. Is that right? Correct. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll, I know now what to include. So, but we have to make it simple because oh, I'm going to create yes. the final list. Dante, tell them to, to uh, PM you privately on the amount. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But the deadline is just for the list, not 
Yeah, the, for the money. No, the deadline is only for, for the list. Just for the list. Dante the list. is the only one who'll know what the amount is, basically. Commitment, yeah. But we need the amount because we want to make sure that uh, how much we have, we have the amount to open yeah. the accounts. I think, okay. I think uh, 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 after Dante has the amount, then Dante, you have to inform Jopez about it. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, we yeah, can definitely. So yeah. after Dante, after you have the amount, may we request the quest that you post in our group chat, the shortfall we're looking at. For yeah. example, yeah, you came up with, let's say, mm -hmm. 800,000. So we have a shortfall of 400,000. Then we should be informed regarding that figure. Yeah, that, that's a good be, idea. I was, yeah. I was hoping that Dante would report hey, you know what? Some people we... should invest less because we are <laughs> over the, the limit of 1.2. Oh, that's that... <laughs> And because uh, I request that's that some a... people invest less. <laughs> I'm but we, whatever we achieve, it would be a range because people would give their range. But to me, if you want to give five or 10 or 20, it should be clear anyway from the onset. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So those who are definite on their, uh, who are already decided on their uh, the amount to invest, then they just put it, no range. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, right. the exact yeah. amount. Yeah. The exact amount. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. I get it. Just to make so, sure. Okay. You <laughs> what is the name sure. of the company now? What is the name? Do we have a name already of the company? Uh, we... Investment Group Class 1974. Who's gonna, uh, think of the, a good name. Uh, uh, later, on, we have to kaya assignment ni Bob. Maganda pangalan. S&P decline of 208. That would trigger the first circuit breaker, and we would pause for about 15 minutes. Uh, as uh, the headlines over the weekend have come fast and furious, let's get the opening bell here. All red, Gita, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> That's just a teaser. <laughs> the market just crashed there. <laughs> <laughs> Best time to buy. <laughs> All right, guys, have fun. Okay, thank you. Okay, bye. Okay, bye.